Well, uh, I hope you had a, a good cup of tea uh, and a chat, and we'll start with a verse from the Bible. Revelation chapter 8, verse 9. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Now, whether this is a natural event or the result of man, picture language or a single catastrophic event, the future of the sea is not great. And today it's facing many serious challenges. David Attenborough, in one of his latest programs, listed four. And the first was overfishing. Not just the damage done to the, to the sea by pulling more fish out of the sea than the remaining populations are able to produce, but also upsetting the entire food web. If you remove the fish, then other things will, other things will become more common, including things which are not helpful. Also, trawls dragged across the bottom of the sea are wrecking the ecosystems there. Valuable coral reefs and things like that are being destroyed. Secondly, rising sea levels. The sea levels are rising, not just because the ice caps are melting, but also because as the sea gets hotter, the water expands. It's a bit inconvenient for us at times. A bit of extra flooding. But in some countries, this is like Bangladesh. This is a disaster. Peoples have, have had their homes destroyed four, five, six times. And as their land gets washed away or covered in the sea, there's now nowhere left for them to grow, for them to live. A lady said, I don't need help. I just need a piece of dry land to build my home on. The city of Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia, is disappearing into the sea. And you can see houses and shops now a metre under sea level. Some Pacific islands may be going to disappear completely. Thirdly, acidification. As the more carbon dioxide dissolves in the sea, the sea is becoming more acidic. And this is very bad news for anything which has got a shell, because their shells are dissolving. Mussels, barnacles, cockles, winkles, scallops and corals are dissolving. Fourthly, pollution. Terrible problem pollution. Not just the plastic pollution that we talk about, but also the pollution for runoff from agricultural waste, fertilizer, which turns the sea green and makes it makes the algae bloom, and when they die they use up the they, they use up the oxygen and light can't penetrate to the bottom of this as deep into the sea as it could. Pesticides, as well as plastics. There's a huge amount of pollution going on and that too is a problem. Now, a bit of frightening science. Hurricanes, Typhoons, cyclones, they're all the same phenomenon. They've just got different names in different parts of the world. And they form over oceans which have got a temperature of about 27 degrees centigrade or higher. The longer the sea has a temperature of 27, or the greater the temperature above 27, the more hurricanes there are going to be, and the stronger those hurricanes are going to be. 
hurricanes in the uh, hitting the coast of America or missing the coast of America, veer round, cross the Atlantic again, and come towards us. They lose power as they go across the cooler sea. But we still get strong winds and a lot of rain. And raised temperature, if the Atlantic gets hotter, as the Atlantic gets hotter, so we are going to get more strong winds and more heavy rain in the autumn. The sea is very resilient. It can cope with a lot. It's slow to heat up. It's the fish can breed back very quickly. It can cope with a lot of acid before it starts change, before its pH changes, before it becomes acid. But like a juggernaut, once the change starts, it's very, very slow to stop. And we've started processes which won't stop for decades, even if we stop, stop the problems. No wonder Jesus, in one of his apocalyptic passages, describing the end times, in Luke 21, verse 25, he said, On earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. So, what can you do about this as an individual? And what can we do it do about it as a church? Stop the tape, have a chat to your friend, and then uh, when you're ready, restart and see what you've thought about. Well, welcome back. I don't know what you thought of, but one thing I'd like to stress is Make sure you buy fish, which is certified MSC, fish that's come from a responsible source and not from a, an overfished source, or alternatively, fish that's been farmed. Coming to the end of our time together, but I'd like to tell you a story. In the forest, there were a whole range of animals and suddenly it caught fire. It was a big, serious fire, and the animals fled to the shore of a lake to watch. All but the hummingbird, who flew to the, over the lake, swooped down, picked up a drop of water in its beak, flew over the fire, and released the drop. Back and forth it went, each time taking a drop of water and dropping it onto the fire. The other animals, including those with trunks like elephants and big mouths like hippos, just laughed and said, do you think you're going to be able to put that fire out by yourself? Yes, a complete waste of time. But the hummingbird said, well, at least I'm doing what I can. We may not be able to solve the problem of plastic pollution. But we can clean a beach. There are things that we can do which will make a difference locally. I'm going to close with a prayer. Sorry about that one. From the island of Vanuatu, an island which is in danger of disappearing. Jesus, be the canoe that holds me in the sea of life. Be the steer that keeps me straight. Be the outrigger that supports me in time of great temptation. Let your spirit be my sail that carries me through each day as I journey steadfastly on the long voyage of life. Amen. And goodbye. I hope I'll have the pleasure of your company for Live Lent 6 next Monday.